I get interested in the subject of the funerals of American soldiers because I was appalled at our government lying our country into a war. I have no reservations about that at all. I think we were. I feel we were. I know we were. And I was also horrified that the soldiers, the deaths of the soldiers, the funerals of the soldiers, had not become a national event. It was taking place in people's hometowns, in a small section of the Bronx, or a place in Brooklyn, but it was not a national story. It was interesting. Interesting. There were a lot of people who came out at this church in Vermont. A lot of veterans showed up, and a lot of American Legion people showed up, women and men, to show their love for the family and for the pain and sacrifice they're going through. And they certainly were going through a lot of pain. She's being given a flag in honor of her husband's death. Interesting expression. She sees no honor, she sees no glory. I think she's very bitter about the sacrifice and the loss for lies. So I spent a lot of time on the computer, Google. They have the same problem that I did trying to find the information in newspapers. You couldn't get it from the New York Times. They would say, Amer soldiers killed. Most of the time you didn't know where they were from. So I, I never had a whole lot of time to get to these funerals. Many times I went on the day of the funeral. The Google information was so close to the events. It wasn't a national story, but the people cared. This family showed up on a lonely road in Pennsylvania. No, no houses around. They know about the boy from the town next door that had been killed in Iraq. And it's neighbors who came, and friends, and family. It's very difficult for me, uh, emotionally. I've tried all of my career to get photographs of people that were honest and true and have great depth about who they were at the moment I photographed them. I wasn't prepared for this. And I don't think they were either. Young friends came. I wonder how close were they to that soldier? Is that his kid's sister? I doubt it. Could the loss been any, any worse? I doubt it. That's the family saying goodbye. All these vets showed up. It's really incredible. Small town, Ellsworth. Ellsworth, Minnesota. The whole town showed up. It felt like, it seemed like, at the end of winter, the cemetery was five or six miles from the village. It was difficult to get to. I got to most of the place, most of them very, very late the night before, the day before, once or twice, sometimes the morning of. There's no way to contact the families before. I was taking that picture, I wonder what the family was thinking. You know what I was thinking. Can't measure that waste. The big city's got it too. Yonkers, New York. A lot of policemen showed up along with the army. And they seemed strong and purposeful. It's very interesting to see how the soldiers reacted to the, this reality. They looked scared. They looked horrified. Where's the glory? I kept asking myself. What do you tell them? The parents loved her. How many times has she seen this?
the local press knew they were always there, and the local press and I were treated the same way. We were shut out as much as they could by the military people overseeing the funerals. Of course, they always said it was because the family didn't want any press. But you were never allowed to approach someone from the family to ask if that were true. I don't think it was true. No family member ever turned on me and said, stop. Never. No one ever said, don't do that. No, don't show me. None. Not once. I had a lot of soldiers say that to me. Don't. Stop. No, you can't. Don't go there. Get back. I tried to get as close as I could. I tried to be as discreet as I could, uh, but there was no way I was going to try to interfere with them in any way. And many times I felt, I'm just not close enough, but there was nothing I could do that I could justify to run out and hound people. I couldn't do it. They saw me. They knew what I was doing. I not I wasn't invisible, but it wasn't my role to engage them. It was just to watch and try to get something that was meaningful and insightful about the reality of this war. The soldier's wife was a soldier. He's mourning her loss. She was killed in Iraq. The Vietnam vets remembered, and they came to many of the girls to give support for people now, for the kids who were in their shoes. A very lonely goodbye. I saw different things, different themes in different funerals. I didn't realize it until I started looking at my photographs. Each was a little different, and I was struck by the behavior of this little girl. I don't know if it was her father or her brother or her cousin. Very young, huh? Big loss, huh? I've seen a lot of very angry, angry people. I've seen many young women and mothers wives and parents, families cringing when they're given the American flag from the very first one. There's no glory in it. They know that. They've been given a rag for their husband's life, for lies. There is no glory. There is no honor. Why don't we see it in the newspapers? see a lot of pictures of the people wounded in London, oh, but they're not Americans, so we can see them. see a lot of people killed by a tsunami, we can see their faces, we can't see Americans. You can see a lot of Iraqis being killed, that's okay. You can't see Americans. We're being lied to, because the consequences of the truth would be too horrible for us to bear, rightfully, and maybe something would happen that would be just and right and positive, but would be not good for the administration. The administration has ignored them, except in uh, very few pandering situations. And the national media, as far as I can see, is completely ignoring the results, the sacrifice, these families. How long are they going to live with the pain of that loss, that suffering? A long, long time. This is the next day. His mother is leaving the church to follow her son to that huge cemetery in the Bronx. I was so horrified at the very beginning of this administration's coming into office. After stealing the election in Florida, and as things progressed and developed, and we saw how really restrictive and conservative and non-democratic this administration was going to be. And then the hysterical lies and propaganda after 9-11. Sure, something should have been done about 9-11, but it should have done the right thing and not invent an enemy that the conservative wing in this country was trying to get rid of since the days of Nixon and Kissinger, even though this country supported that regime. Yeah, it was a terrible regime. It's a terrible man. He had nothing to do with 9-11. That just made me mad, as it should have, and more determined. There must be a reason, a real bad reason, to not want America to see American soldiers dead or see the horrible pain for American families. No, I can't show that. Oh, we can't show that. Oh, we can't show that. Democracy, free speech, Bill of Rights.
It was cold and snowy and rainy at the same time. It was a bitter day. Kira is holding a flag. She's 20 years old. Her husband was 20 years old. I cannot tell you how much she and her family suffered as they presented her with a flag and some brass medals. And Kira and family heard the volley of gunfire. 